Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about some industry certs. We're going to discuss what IT industry certificates I have, what I think you should get, what I think was maybe a waste of time, what I think was useful, and what would I do if I could do it all again. So to give you all a bit of a background, if you're new to the channel, or maybe if you just haven't come across any of my videos that are more work related. So I am a principal cloud consultant. So a principal cloud consultant, but I do a lot of work in the IT space. It doesn't always have to be cloud. I've got a lot of experience in other products as well. Windows Server, VMware, Nutanix, Citrix, all of those I've sort of got a lot of experience in. My core focus is Microsoft Azure and Microsoft 365 products. But all of the certifications I have done are more or less around the Microsoft stack. So anyway, we won't get into what I do exactly in the IT field. If you are interested in my IT background and what I have done to get to a principal consultant role, then feel free to hit the card above one of these sides hit that card and it's a bit of a video of a breakdown of all the roles that I've had and how I got there and maybe a bit of what I did inside those roles as well. If you do have any questions, just drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, let's get into it. So my thoughts on industry certificates. So when I was in IT, maybe a few years ago, or maybe, maybe this is most people that are in IT, you sort of sit there and you wonder if it's worth it. You see the guys or the girls that are in the roles that you are sort of aspiring to and you think to yourself do they have certs some of them do some of them don't but it's always sort of one of those things that pe some people think you do need them some people think you don't my mentality around certificates has always been if you can get them get them there's no harm in doing them the only thing that stops you from doing a certificate is a lack of time if you don't make time for it and also just a lack of effort so if you're sort of contemplating whether you should or you shouldn't and it's because of one of those reasons then maybe reassess because there's no harm it's just self-learning anyway and it's only going to do you good you're not getting the certificate for the company you work for or for the department you work for you're just getting the certificate because you're going to use it in your field because you're the one that's going to be certified don't get me wrong there is scenarios where companies need x amount of certifications to receive some sort of partnership but it doesn't really matter you still earn that certificate it's still yours if you leave the company it's still your certificate so my thoughts around whether you should or shouldn't get it in general is yeah just do it if you can why not so let's go through a couple of the certifications that i have i actually can't really remember them all so i've written them down so the one of the first certifications that i went for was the microsoft azure administrator um, I think it was called something different when I did it I've had to renew it two times so that certificate maybe I'll give you a bit of a breakdown of, of what it involved so the Azure administrator certificate involved a lot of when I did it there was a lot of PowerShell there was a lot of um, how to do certain things inside Azure so basically what I had to do for that certificate is a lot of lab work um, i found that reading the actual um, outline the course outline on the microsoft website was actually a lot easier than watching someone else's video i did actually watch some videos um, they were on a website maybe called plural site or a cloud guru at the time uh, i find that those videos are great i do find it very hard to keep concentration um, everyone learns differently so some people will actually enjoy listening to someone talk about something the way that I like to learn is for example I'll read in the Microsoft outline that you have to be able to use a Azure Key Vault and I'll read all the objectives inside that component and then I'll go and I'll deploy it inside Azure because I feel like I retain that knowledge a lot easier once I deploy it and then I always go back to the course outline and make sure I actually covered everything. Now in the certifications or the exams, they don't really, you're not going to get an exact idea of what they're going to ask, but you will get a basic understanding from those course outlines. So my suggestion for the Azure Administrator one is read the course outline and then actually try and implement some of those objectives inside the Azure subscription and I think you retain the knowledge a lot, a lot more. Now, whether this certificate was actually useful to me or not, 
I think it was. Um, when I was moving into the Azure space, not a lot of people had this certification were where I worked and where the sort of the area that I worked in in, in Australia. Um, I think that a lot of people weren't really willing to sit down and study for the exam. I studied a lot. That's probably the exam that I studied the most for, the Azure Administrator one, because it was one of my first cloud exams. I did a lot of work to sort of um, make myself very familiar. So I think that it was useful because in actually sitting there and implementing what was outlined in the course outline, I learned a lot. So yeah, I got the certificate, but probably more importantly is that I actually got a lot of experience in implementing some things and some resources inside an Azure subscription. And then that's really the time that you understand what you can and can't do. So you can read a lot, but then when you actually try and implement it, that's when you really get an understanding of what it, how it works and also what the restrictions are and the limitations are of that resource that you're implementing. So I won't hang on too much about the Azure Administrator because that was one of the first ones and I can't remember too much about it. The next one that I went for was the Azure Architect exam. So the Azure Architect certification, that was a lot harder than the administrator type certification. Um, that's probably because a lot of it is less of an implementation and it's less implementation questions and more so questions around you know, how to build a solution from start to finish. So the Azure Architect certification, did it benefit me? Yes, I absolutely think it did because it sort of teaches you to go from a ID into a full-blown solution inside an Azure subscription. So that's what helps you understand the information you need to gather from your clients and from your problem that then allows you to build the correct solution. So is it hard? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Do I think it benefited me in the long run? Absolutely. I think that that was one of the major ones that got me out of that sort of BAU type role into a architect role. So, so as soon as I got that certification, I also landed a solution architect role. I had been gunning for that role, but that's where I landed anyway. The next two certifications that I did were Microsoft 365 Associate Administrator. So Microsoft 365 Administrator Associate, and the other one is Microsoft 365 Administrator Expert. Now, I found that those exams were actually a lot easier than the Azure ones, and I think that's because as a engineer, or a window engineer, or system engineer, or third level engineer, whatever you call it from wherever you're from, I think that once you're in one of those roles, you're probably in Microsoft 365 a lot, especially if you're working at an MSP or something like that, where a lot of your customers are using Microsoft 365. I think that you will find yourself in Microsoft 365 a lot of the time, making changes, administering users and mailboxes and whatnot, and also just implementing the new stuff that comes into 365. So I found that that was actually a lot easier over an exam, but that's probably because I had a lot more experience at the time inside Microsoft 365. So when it comes to Microsoft 365 exams, are they hard? They're not that hard because you probably have a lot more experience in them just naturally. Um, are they worth it? I think they are just like every other exam. Uh, I think that so maybe you can maybe you can get away with not having a couple of the Microsoft 365 ones if you want to spend your time doing something else like maybe one of the Azure Architect ones or maybe if you want to focus more on security I think if you come into an interview with a Microsoft 365 administrator badge or something like that that's probably enough maybe you don't have to go for the expert one I don't find that there was that much difficulty difference between the associate and the expert. Another one that I didn't cover was the Microsoft Azure Security. So I've actually got two security Microsoft certifications as well. One is the Microsoft 365 Security and one is the Microsoft Azure Security. Those two are actually, I think that they were actually very beneficial. Um, a lot of the time when you're working in an MSP or something like that, or if even if you're working internally, you don't get to use all of the security features inside Microsoft 365 or Azure because number one, it's very expensive. And number two, you might not be working in an environment where you actually need them. So doing the exams teaches you a lot about all the security features that you might not see day to day inside those two platforms. I would always prefer someone to have a Microsoft security 
certification when they come for an interview. Um, it's not the end of the world if they don't, but I always sort of look towards the person that has that badge. I think that it benefited me a lot as well because it shows that you've got a willingness to learn about security. And I feel like when I then was able to speak about solutions to customers, I could always touch on security as well. So when I give my examples, I'm always trying to give examples of real world examples where I've actually applied that knowledge. So in general, do I think that certificates have benefited me? Yeah, I, I really think I would and I would do them again if, if I needed to. I have actually renewed most of them twice already. So you, you can tell from me renewing them that I do think that they're beneficial. When it comes to hiring people, I like to always hire someone that has certifications if possible. Now, when I say that, I'm just gonna be outright and say, if two individuals had very similar experience and they had very similar skills and one of them had a cert and one of them did it, I'd probably pick the one with the cert. That doesn't mean that the other one's no good, but I just have to make a, you know, I have to make a decision. I'm probably gonna base it around that certification because when I see someone's actually gone to the effort of going out and studying and learning the product and then actually certifying in it, it shows me that they're really serious about the job and they really have a strong passion in IT. I hope that was insightful. If you are going for some exams, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. And if you did enjoy the video, then please smash that like button and we'll see you next time.